Today we're going to be working on Lab 6. You should have a digital um, version of this worksheet. We'll be identifying the substances. We'll be examining them and writing down all of our observations for each of the substances prior to heating. We'll be discussing the changes that occur while heating and then we'll let them cool down and we'll also observe the appearance after cooling. So our first substance today is called ammonium chloride and here it is right here and so here is the appearance of that prior to heating small granules. Um, some of it's clumping together just a little bit. Um, it looks a lot like regular table salt. Our second um, ingredient or substance is called copper carbonate. And here it is here. Um, it is green in color. It's a, it's a nice, um, almost a tealy green. It's also powdery. Our next substance is called copper sulfate. And here it is here, copper sulfate. You'll notice that uh, it has large crystals and that um, it's a very pretty royal blue color. Next we have what's called sodium chloride. And sodium chloride, it looks a lot like the ammonium chloride. It's white in color. It has very small granules. It's a solid. You'll notice some of it is also clumping together. And it too looks a lot like table salt. Then we have what's called zinc oxide. So here's our zinc oxide. And our zinc oxide is also a white solid. It too is very powdery. And so there's that one. Our last substance is sulfur. So sulfur is what we'll look at next. And sulfur is also a solid. It's a bright yellow in color. And it too is quite powdery. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our fuel can. So I know it's difficult to see, but that is going. And then inside of a test tube, so I've got a test tube here, I'm going to place one small scoop. The scoop looks like this. And we're going to start with our first substance, which is ammonium chloride. We're going to place that inside of the test tube. And then I've got some little pinchers and we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold that then over the fire, looking to examine what happens as it's heating. So I can see that the inside of my test tube is getting some um, kind of some white cloudiness to it. Near the top, I seem to be getting a little bit of a white ring. It's definitely still in a solid form. So but the biggest changes I'm seeing are some white cloudiness that's forming on the inside. Uh, you'll notice that uh, we definitely have some forming right about here as well. You can really see that coming out. I also notice as um, it's heating and the hotter it gets, I've got some um, smoke that's beginning to come out of the top here and it definitely looks like a white smoke so you've got the appearance of that smoke attaching here as well as coming out the top. 
So that was the ammonium chloride. We're gonna go ahead and place that over here so that it can cool down so we can observe it later. We'll move on to our second substance. Our second substance is known as copper carbonate. Copper carbonate was the green, uh, blue greenish powder. And so we'll go ahead and put some of that inside of our test tube as well. Again, just using a small scoop. Then just like previously, we're gonna go ahead and use our pinchers and we'll begin to heat that. Not the easiest to see on these videos, but uh, the very end of it, the inside, are we're losing that pretty blue-green color, and it's starting right now. It's turning brown. You can really see it turning, turning brown, almost getting darker than a brown. Um, it's still, still quite powdery. Um, even the stuff that's turning brown, I notice, is is still quite powdery. It definitely still moves around, it's still powdery, turning brown, and the longer I leave it on there, it's turning black. So what's interesting is that um, it's definitely heating from the outside of the test tube in, so you can see the inside still has um, some of that blue-green color. I also noticed that we've got some condensation or some moisture forming on the inside of our test tube there. And so we're gonna go ahead and set this over here and allow it to cool down as well. There we go, oopsie. There we go, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next substance. Our next substance um, is the copper sulfate. And it's very pretty um, blue looking uh, crystals. I'm in front of the hot pot. It looks like I'm right over the top of it, but I'm not, I'm right in front of it. Um, and so we're gonna place a couple of those into our test tube and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna put, looks like three or four of them in there. I listen, I can hear it. It's got a crackling sound. I notice the very edges of the rocks are beginning to turn a pale white color. So it looks like as it's heating up, the rocks are turning a white color. If I look closely at them, I'm thinking that that sound might be some sort of moisture burning off of it, because I can see kind of a little tiny, almost, you can see the little tiny crackle. So as you look at that, you might be able to see where it's beginning to turn, just a smidgen white there on the bottom. Can you see that? I've also got a lot of moisture that's forming at the top of the test tube. You can see that in there. That uh, moisture that's uh, forming at the top is um, doesn't have any color, so but it definitely has large droplets. You can really see those turning white now. The longer I leave them over the fire, the whiter they tend to be getting. But they're not really breaking apart. They're still staying in their original form. I've also got some steam coming out the top. We'll let that sit over here and dry out. Or not dry out, but cool off so we can observe it in a little bit. Well, lots, of, lots of sounds happening from that one. Our next one, we've got uh, what we call sodium chloride. And so again, I'm going to take just a couple of scoops of the sodium chloride. And I'm going to place that inside of my test tube. 
So here's kind of what it looks like as I'm placing um, a little bit of this inside the test tube. Just kind of tapping it in there and so you can see I've got that right down there. And now I'm placing it over the fire. <clears throat> Again, this sodium chloride looks a lot like table salt. Move it around in there. I don't really seem to have any changes. There's no moisture forming on the test tube. There is no color change. Uh, so far, it seems to just be staying in its same form. So nothing, nothing really happening with that one. So we'll just put it back in there and let it cool. And we'll go ahead and grab our next test tube. Our next uh, substance is called zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is a white solid uh, in a powder form. So again, we're just placing our scoop inside there, and then over the fire it goes. Still in its powder form here. Let it heat up a little. It's hard to see right now, but uh, I am seeing some color change on there. Um, the white powder is getting um, a little bit of a yellow tint to it, so it's kind of turning yellow as it's warming up. Not a bright yellow, um, just a real um, kind of creamy looking yellow. Again, it doesn't show up very well in the, um, in the video, but uh, it is getting a slight yellow color to it. I can leave it in here just a little bit longer. Maybe it'll show up. So it looks like I'm starting to see a little bit of it in the video here. So just a nice creamy kind of yellow to it. It's definitely um, more yellow the closer that uh, substance is to the fire. So I'll set that over here. We'll let that cool down as well. And then we have our last substance. Our last substance is the uh, yellow powder called sulfur. And uh, when you take the lid off of sulfur, it has a faint smell, um, not, not overly strong. So we'll get that powder in here. A powder is considered a solid. Remember, you're looking for solid liquids and gases, right? So we've got a solid here. And into the fire it goes. And let's see what happens when we heat that up. If I look at the bottom here, you can kind of see that defining there. It's turning into a yellow liquid. So it's definitely melting. Um, it's actually melting pretty, ra pretty rapidly. Um, my yellow is now starting to turn um, to an orange color. And as it gets warmer, it's now turning red. Looks like just about all of it has melted. And now it's turning a little bit black. It's getting, it's starting to bubble just a little bit inside there. And that black looks a lot like tar. You'll notice too, I've got some um, some color forming on the side of the test tube as well. It's bubbling, it's black, it looks like black liquid goo. Longer it sits here, it's even increasing in size a little bit. The yellow on the side of the tube is starting to get a little bit orange. 
And we're gonna go ahead and set that aside. Oh, look at it, it's really starting to grow now. We'll go ahead and set that to dry as, or not to dry, sorry, to cool down as well. And we'll put the lid over our pot and move that out of the way. All right, so we'll let that cool down a little bit. Meanwhile, let's take a look at some of the other substances and what has happened as they have begun to cool. So our first substance um, was the ammonium chloride. So here's our ammonium chloride. And you can see that we still have the, um, the powdery um, res uh, residue up here. There's this sitting down here. So um, it's the powder itself um, has darkened just a little bit after cooling. Um, just a little bit, it's definitely still white. Uh, next, we have our copper carbonate. So here it is here. Um, the part that turned black definitely is still black. It's also still very powdery. So as I move it around in here, it just turns into kind of a black powder. So it's not changing back. It looks like once it's changed in color and um, been heated, it, it uh, is a permanent change. Next, we have our copper sulfate. Um, our copper sulfate turned white. You can see little bits of white still there. Um, one thing that uh, I do see happening is it used to be that uh, these uh, rock chunks were um, solid white, and I notice that as it cools down, it's returning to a blue color. Not quite as dark of a blue, more of a teal blue, but it is returning to that blue color. Our next substance was the, um, let's see, we have the copper, we've got the, oh, sodium chloride, here we go. So here's our sodium chloride. And our sodium chloride, um, the test tube turned a little bit brown, but inside my sodium chloride looks exactly the same. It had absolutely no change. So you can see there where it's white and the, there's a little bit of color that came from the test tube um, on the outside from um, heating, but the inside it still just looks like table salt. There's absolutely no change, no color. So this substance here, um, throughout heating and cooling, it actually did not change at all. Our next substance is that uh, zinc oxide. And if uh, you remember, it was getting some yellow to it. It was a kind of a creamy colored yellow. And uh, as it has cooled, it's actually just returned to its white uh, powdery state. So it changed while heated and then it went back afterwards. Lastly, I do have the um, sulfur and it's still cooling just a little bit on the inside. Um, there's still a tiny bit that is a little bit liquid. There is quite a putrid smell that comes from this one. Um, definitely a sulfur smell, um, kind of that rotten egg odor. Um, the yellow on the um, inside of the test tube is visible. What I do see is as this is cooling, it's starting to harden and it's sticking to the um, to the sides of the test tube. So quite interesting in its liquid form. Yeah, very, very dark. So from your worksheet, um, again, it should be digital. Um, you should have some additional questions to answer here. So which substance, if any, showed no change when heated? Which of these substances produced new substances? In other words, they don't look the same after um, heating and cooling than they did before we started. And finally, how can heating a substance help you to identify it? So I want you to think about that last question, and I want you to think about if you know, for example, that when sulfur is heated, it produces a very egg-like smell, if you were heating something that you didn't know and it produced that smell, what might that tell you? Think about that. All right.